I'm going to read out uh, a short text which I gave out to you um, and accompany it with not many but a, a few pictures. Uh, they're certainly not as nicely prepared as Lizzie did. Um, it's a kind of uh, scene setting or keynote uh, manifesto for today. Um, let's go forward. Um, um, I told you I wasn't as good as Lizzie. This came out sideways for some mysterious reason. Uh, this is the, f the only architecture show that I ever produced. It was in 1994 for the Milan Triennale. Um, and it was of Liverpool. I did it with the um, NATO group from uh, the Architectural Association, whose new book uh, has just come out. Uh, I recommend it. Uh, to you. Um, and that was when I first began thinking about the problems of exhibition. Um, it was a proposition. Um, at the time, Liverpool was even poorer than it is today, and the EU gave it about half a billion pounds of so called Objective One money, won't see that, that again, to regenerate. And we suggested using that money in its entirety to rebuild the overhead railway. And so we did an exhibition which was partly historical um, of the overhead railway which was demolished in 1957 and partly futural uh, with suggestions as to what to do and how to do a new overhead railway. So in other words, we were exhibiting an absent object, a missing limb that had been cut off from the body of the city and we wanted to put it prosthetically back. The absent object is important here. Um, the next Liverpool connection I suppose is the great Liverpool Le Corbusier exhibition um, of 2007, 50 years after an earlier exhibition. This was done as part of the City of Architecture in the crypt, the Lutyens crypt of the Catholic Cathedral. So at this point I'll start uh, to read from my text. DEPA, the display, exhibition and propagation of architecture. These three terms work outwards in space and in time from a design object towards public discourse. Design object means here a built or unbuilt work presented in itself and or in representations. This distinction is important because whereas art exhibitions generally display actual works, few architectural exhibitions display actual buildings. So note that here in the Le Corbusier we have some actual sculptures, an actual painting, uh, some actual furniture, but no actual buildings. So exhibition, architectural exhibitions mostly display representations of absent objects, absent because elsewhere or destroyed or unbuilt. Therefore major concerns in the theory and practice of DEPA will be, of, will, uh, be the value and the effectiveness of various kinds of representation and the techniques of reprography, display and propagation. Of course we should note that there are buildings and places which have become displays in themselves and exhibited as monuments and parks, heritage sites, tourist attractions and spectacles such as Sonne Lumiere. These are culturally significant, but they are special cases and aren't directly pertinent here today. Likewise, we can set aside those show houses that the companies such as Barrett and Persimmon and so on uh, display as on-site advertisements to buyers. Closer to our theme is another kind of display of actual buildings. Mostly German, they're exemplified by the Werkbund's 1914 Köln exhibition 
such as here, and the 1927 Weissenhof exhibition, his Weissenhof Siedlung, um, and Berlin's 1987 Eber, which were intended as persuasive models for future policy. So here's Eber uh, in various forms um, in Rob Creer's fantasy version of a rebuilt Berlin after the damage, these are the fragments left of Berlin after the bombing and the demolitions. This was the 1957 building exhibition in Berlin in Tabau with the Hansa Quarter uh, of a kind of ideal model of a sort of uh, uh, Kiam uh, version of a new city, buildings in parkland. And then um, the idea of critical reconstruction and of behutsame Stadterneuerung, it's a wonderful uh, German phrase, roughly meaning cautious urban renewal, meaning uh, build old buildings made new through various kinds of refurbishment. Um, and indeed it gets propagated then in such things as postage stamps. Uh, this is an important point to bear in mind. Um, so, where are we? I've lost my place. Yes, the nearest thing that we had to this in Liverpool was the 1983 Garden Festival, now, alas, destroyed. These exceptions of real exhibition, real buildings and real uh, uh, exhibited, uh, if we put them to a side, uh, we can say that DEPA, our topic today, mostly means representations by various means and methods and in various modes and media of absent objects. In, d in this, architectural exhibitions, I believe, indicate the future. Museums, I'm sure, will become like Liverpool's FACT, the Foundation for Art and Creative Technology, image mediators using relay, reprography <coughs> and replicas. Here is uh, a replica of Veronese's marriage at Cana, which is in the Louvre. And it was reconstituted <coughs> um, using technology and the replica put back into its original place uh, in Venice. Here is some of the technology, the scanning technology that was used. I'm quite convinced that this is the future of museums. Um, I was in the uh, Hermitage this year, my about 15th visit, and um, it was impossible to see the Leonardos because stood there for 10 minutes, I was constantly uh, pushed aside by a literal flood of people taking selfies in front of these very uh, rare and wonderful paintings. And this can't go on. It's the same with Stonehenge. So I think it's all going to be replicated. And that will also solve the problem of the Elgin marbles. Uh, they will be replicated to such a degree that only a chemist with um, a microscope could distinguish any difference. And architecture exhibitions, in a sense, are pioneering this because they always already are exhibiting things that are not actually there. This is uh, actually a forum. Now, let's just go back from there. So, but DEPA also indicates the future quite operatively, for culturally and politically the most urgent kind of absence that uh, architectural represent, uh, exhibitions can represent is the absence of the unbuilt, the not yet built, the could be built, the might be built, as with my exhibition in NATO's of the overhead railway. Was built, is not there now, could be again. And you can use an exhibition to do that. It is among such mightlyhoods, not likelihoods, but mightlyhoods, that architectural exhibitions conjure images, not private, but collective, of that if, which W.H. Oden 
named as originally inceptive to culture in his poem The Birth of Architecture, where he wrote, to take umbrage at death, to construct a second nature of tomb and temple, lives must know the meaning of if. Now let's look at these three terms a little more closely. Display. Every architecture student who mounts a pin-up for a crit encounters problems of display. What to emphasize? What to subordinate? How to illustrate in space an idea, account or narration in time? Moreover, the demands of representation, of presentation indeed, start already within the drawings and the models themselves. An idea is set out in a drawing, the drawing takes its part in a series, and the series is set out on a wall or a table or displayed in a sequence on a computer screen or by projection. Here is a collection of storyboards, which is a, a technique that um, was originally developed in the film industry. Um, Hitchcock used it extensively to plan the narrative of a movie, but which architects have also adopted to spread out in time as well as in space uh, the logic, the sequence, the structure, the narrative of a building. Um, remember uh, Cedric Price who laid such great stress on timing as well as spacing in buildings. To set out a design, uh, sorry I've missed out a line, here we are. Yes, projects, and um, we can use, remember the Italian word progetto, design, is always, uh, already, they always already entail persuasive projection, they entail rhetoric. To set out a design is to set out a stall, just like in the market. Drawings and models may outstall a design, but the drawings and models in turn must be presented and explained in the rhetorical display. And outstalling, which word resembles the German word Ausstellung, meaning exhibition. Exhibitions. <coughs> Exhibitions are aggregations of displays arranged to illustrate and convey ideas, stories and arguments. Their purposes, methods and audiences are important to consider here. They vary from small shows on specific topics to vast expos such as those staged by the Venice Biennale and Milan Triennale. Methods used may range from conventional arrays of documents to installations that may be highly coded and rhetorical, critical and polemic, spectacular or cryptic and I think Liz's sequence of pictures just illustrated all of those. The popularity of installations, often influenced by contemporary art practices, tiny pictures, um, here's one that's very material, here's one that's immaterial using high technology media and so on, is one of the most striking features of architectural exhibitions in recent years. Another has been the expanding range and virtuosity of reprographic and display technology available to curators. The days when architecture was exhibited in faint drawings and cardboard models are gone. Together, these tendencies towards, on the one hand, allegoric installation and on the other, spectacular virtuosity in display have led to what we might call a Baroque era in exhibition culture. Yet while this is all good business for the culture industry, we should keep a critical eye, a critical check on its implications, especially where they may converge with commercial interests in property develop and advertising, development and advertising, or with political goals in mass mesmerism. Two years ago, this symposium heard a brilliant dissection by Davide Ponzini and Michele Nastasi of the interests at work 
in making the practices of star architecture complicit with the cult of the iconic edifice. Likewise, similar interests and purposes may be seen in, at work in blockbuster shows, iconic exhibitions and star curators. In these spectacular shows, exhibitionist tales may begin to wag the architectural dog. Propagation. Exhibitions no longer vanish on closing. They persist in electronic afterlife as data spread abroad, a web and a cloud, like in a loft, a float, a web, a cloud. I believe in extending the English language whenever possible. The Venice Biennale announced that the 2016 exposition is now open to visit on the Several Thousand Images website. A loft, a broad, a web and a cloud, big data, in high definition, in 3D printing, in the Internet of Things, extend new dimension to André Malraux's 70-year-old idea of the Musée Imaginaire. Here's André Malraux. Uh, this famous rhetorical photograph of him preparing his uh, book, The Museum Without Walls and the Voices of Silence. Um, I remember spreading out images like this on the floor in my first lessons in first year art history uh, in uh, comparative methodology. Uh, we had hundreds and hundreds of pictures of uh, Dark Ages manuscripts and sculptures are all spread out trying to kind of spot the continuities and comparisons and analogies. Did that exactly. Nowadays you'd use a screen, I suppose. The Musée Imaginaire, often called a museum without walls. A 2017 Manchester conference, the Inclusive Museum, which will be later this year, announces that, quote, the emerging communications environment in which image, sound and word are all made of the same digital stuff affords new mo openings for museums and new challenges. Here is the image in the, uh, or the work of art in the age of, of the mediated and the replicated image. Um, here's an original spreadsheet, an actual gallery of actual paintings. Um, here is part of Abi Warburg's Bilder Atlas, his comparative spreads of iconographical uh, examples uh, in what he called the Nachleben, the afterlife of antiquity. But we can also say that in a sense the afterlife, the Nachleben of the exhibition persists in the media. <coughs> Here is another example of Warburg's Bilder Atlas. It's a kind of homemade exhibition, DIY exhibition. I remember when we did the Liverpool exhibition in, uh, in Milan, we were all making things ourselves and uh, Pietro de Rossi came through in the morning and he said, ah, l'inglese, uh, do it yourself, uh, DIY. Any consideration, uh, yet there never was a display without ambient supplementary mediation in publications, talk talk and reviews. Any consideration on architectural exhibitions requires awareness of how they fit into the range of ways in which architecture enters public consciousness and discourse. I suppose pioneers in the multimedia uh, persuasive exhibition were Charles and Ray Eames in the 1950s. Here um, is Charles Eames showing uh, Anthony Armstrong Jones, recently dead, um, an exhibition of Buckminster Fuller. There are uh, Charles and Ray uh, putting together an exhibition and already set to photograph it and reproduce it as photograph. Here's an exhibition they did about Gandhi. Um, they were already working with computerized imagery and of course the great spreadsheet of the time was the light table which we don't use anymore but which I wish we still had because it's such a beautiful thing. 
Um, and the kind of piece de resistance, I suppose, was the exhibition they did in Moscow in 1959, A Glimpse of America, with lots of uh, big TV screens showing motorways and consumer goodies. And here's uh, Tricky Dicky Nixon uh, uh, explaining to Nikita Khrushchev the advantages of a new soap powder. Um, this is the exhibition as a political uh, gesture. So design cannot be done without representation and display, nor in a democratic realm accomplished without propagation and persuasion. Thus, from inception and throughout, Odin's architectural if must always and everywhere know the meaning of rhetoric. So here I finish with uh, some color slides of the Eames's Moscow exhibition and the cover of Adrian Forty's books Words and Buildings, the Vocabulary of Modern uh, Architecture. Um, picture of Mies, uh, a man famously, supposedly, of new words, using words to explain uh, to his colleagues in Chicago the uh, value of what he was doing. Um, so we have words and images. They make the exhibition. Right, thank you very much. That's... Uh, <laughs>